Hey, I'm Sven Masterson, one of the co-founders and mentors in the Mentoring Men community, and I show men how to transform stuck, painful, and broken marriages into deeply connected, passionate, and intimate marriages. And in this video, I want to talk to you about one of the main shifts that I experienced that helped me experience this exact same transformation in my 29-year marriage to my wife, Zelda. This video is going to be about this most pivotal shift I made to move from being in an unhappy marriage to deep connection, intimacy, and a very satisfying relationship. I'm going to talk to you in this video about why this shift was so hard for me to make, how this shift changed my life and my relationship and my interactions, not just with Zelda but with others. I'm going to talk to you about what this shift accomplished in our relationship, and I'm going to talk to you about what I wish I had known back then before in the 20 years prior to this shift experience, uh, being an experience in my life. And then lastly, I'm going to share very briefly how you can start experiencing this same shift today. Now let's get right to it. I want to jump right into what was this shift. And in a nutshell, this shift was this. I stopped seeking changes in my wife and instead I focused on being a more inspirational man. Now to my wife, yes, but not for just for her benefit. I actually shifted to leaving the focus on what other people are doing in life in general and turned my focus into being a better me. And I just have that summarized here as being this, this, this stopping the seeking of changes in her and instead learning to be a more inspirational man to her and to others. Now, why was this so hard? Well, to be blunt, I lacked humility. Now, if you had met me then, if you had known me then, you wouldn't have said necessarily I was some arrogant asshole. I was just a guy that thought he was doing his best like everybody else. I thought I had humility. Other people describe me as having humility. Everybody in my life pretty much told me I was a great husband, great father, great colleague and businessman. Nobody was complaining about these things. And because I heard these things often enough, when I started to experience pain and frustration in my life, I naturally assumed it wasn't me, it was other people. I believed all of the hype and the, and the BS that people told me. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm a bad guy or I was a bad guy then, it's just that hearing so many things from other people about how well I was doing really blinded me to even consider that maybe the relationship struggles I had were in part my responsibility. I didn't know then um, that what inspires and attracts women was not what I thought it was. I didn't know that in fact the things I was doing a lot of times in life and relationship infuriate women and repels them. And lastly, I confused my accomplishments in life, my achievement, with being the same thing as inspiration. And though our accomplishments and achievements might inspire other people in life sometimes, a romantic partner is not necessarily that thrilled with your kind of shallow achievements and accomplishments in life. And yet I felt a certain amount of entitlement to having her adoration and respect and appreciation simply because I did things that in hindsight I would have done whether I was married or not. It was also this hard because I'm a man and in general men may need more pain in order to change. Now, it's really easy to critique men for this. And in fact, a lot of women critique men for needing so much pain to change. I've really come to see that this is a great gift in men in the long run. When you need a man to sit in a spot and do something painful and necessary, men are excellent at this. A man will sit in one spot with a, a a sniper rifle trained on an enemy for hours and days. He'll endure discomfort and pain to accomplish what he needs to do. And so it's to our benefit in much of life that it takes significant pain to derail us from something. Unfortunately, in marriage, um, you can get in the same kind of habit of being within a comfortable threshold of pain that you simply don't become conscious and awake to your need to change until that pain gets rather significant. And that was exactly the case for me. I needed a significant amount of pain before I was ready to change. 
Now that pain for me looked like almost losing my family, coming to the place where I was ready to end my marriage. My marriage was not going well, and I would have faced the loss of you know, together time with my kids, my home, my assets, etc. So it was really looking like a pretty painful thing to have to look at some of these areas. And I needed it to be that painful because I'm stubborn, I'm tenacious, and I kept trying the same approach over and over again, expecting things would be different. I learned in this process several things that were eroding my relationship. The first was arguing. I was not the kind of guy that you'd see like, you know, in Walmart arguing with his wife. This was a much more civil way of arguing, but it was an arguing that was combative nonetheless. I had what I would have described as a very adversarial relationship with Zelda. Constantly at odds, constantly needing to, to feeling like I had to stand up for myself and assert my point of view. This came with a lot of defensiveness and the need to constantly um, push back against whatever she was saying with proving that I was innocent, with fact-checking, with correcting the record, um, that kind of stuff. The same kind of thing that actually a lot of attorneys I work with are, are very good at. I was very defensive. I needed to be right. I was insecure. Right? Now, I wouldn't have known this if you had said, like, hey, are you insecure? I wouldn't have said, yeah, I'm insecure. But I had a lot of insecurities that were not necessarily conscious to me, and they came out in these times. I was also highly judgmental, meaning I would always had an opinion about what other people should be doing with their life, what they should think differently, what they should do differently. And I brought a lot of this, quite frankly, to the relationship by telling my wife what she could do better, how this could work better, how, etc. Now, I thought that was just advice, that I was giving her benevolent feedback. But in reality, it was just judgment. The other thing I did was a lot of over-explaining. You see, I thought if people didn't agree with me, I need to slow down and say it again with new words. And so I would explain and over-explain and re-explain and then re-explain my re-explaining. Because what I was after, again, was this need to be right. And so I kept explaining and explaining and explaining in an attempt to get her to see that I was correct. Another thing that I did on a routine basis was being indecisive. I was cold and I would retract my, my affection, my warmth, my kindness, my presence, um, etc. Anytime Zelda was acting a way that I found unfavorable. And lastly, I spent a lot of time in a, in a melancholy mood. I just felt like kind of sad, despondent, gray, a lot. And all of this was just par for the course for my relationship. Now, what I ended up doing is replacing these things as I turned my focus from Zelda to me. I replaced arguing with listening. I replaced defensiveness with openness. The need to be right with the confidence in what I believe and without the need to make everybody else believe the same thing. I replaced insecurity with security, judgment with acceptance, um, over explaining with personal clarity. Let me pause there a minute and explain why. That was kind of a, a little bit of ironic irony. The reason I really over explained was oftentimes that I kept talking and talking and talking and talking and explaining, really because I lacked personal clarity about what it is that I was believing or thinking. Or wanted to say and so when you lack clarity as a man you tend to use a lot of words in how you communicate to other people it's almost as if you're trying to find your own truth in the process and because I lacked personal clarity I did a lot of over explaining I replaced my coldness with warmth I replaced melancholy with a sense of fun and excitement and adventure and here's what changed me in the process um, I used to have resentment and where I had resentment, I had appreciation. I used to have contempt, and that was replaced with forgiveness. I used to have a tremendous amount of stonewalling in our relationship, where Zelda would just kind of be cold and distant and not, not available and just silent. And it used to really frustrate me. And that all went away. And now in stonewalling's place, I have connection. 
I used to experience a tremendous amount of frustration, which was replaced with satisfaction. I used to experience disappointment, and that has been replaced with enjoyment. What I wish I had known then that I didn't know and I know now, and really at the root of everything, was that happiness is an inside job. You see, I was so focused on what Zelda needed to change because I believed that it was her being these certain ways that was depriving me of the life of satisfaction and happiness that I wanted. I wish I'd also known that it doesn't matter what others say about you. Um, let me back up. It doesn't matter what others know about your love language and how much they try to communicate that. If you don't love yourself, you can't hear any of it. Early on in our marriage, Zelda and I got that book and became students of this love language idea. And I would say we made a really solid effort to really get to know one another's love language and speak them. But because of the blockade of loathing self, and a lack of self-acceptance, no matter how much Zelda spoke my love language, it simply didn't land. It didn't find purchase or resonate with me because I didn't fundamentally accept myself. And I wish I had known that then because it would have saved me a lot of pain and grief in that process. I also wish I had known that no amount of changes in another person will ever overcome what I didn't like within myself. And this is kind of related to that first point. I thought I had a problem with other people, that my unhappiness was really about what other people were doing wrong and what they could do differently. But what I was really experiencing was just my internal state. And no amount of changes in other people are going to change my internal state because that's not how it works. It's a little bit like if I have a sore throat asking someone else to put a, a, a lozenge in their throat. Right? It's not going to do anything for my sore throat. But that's exactly how I lived conceptually. And when I put that away, big things started to happen. Now, lastly, I wish I had known men who know the things that I know now who would have shared them with me. And I earnestly looked for probably 20 years um, without finding very many men who are willing to share kind of these, these hidden but easy truths with me as a young man. And for that reason, after I came through these big transitions and started to experience major and beneficial changes in my own life, I put together the Mentoring Men community with several other men who had, had, who had very similar stories and trajectories. And for that reason, we now share these things with men all over the world to help them to move from these same painful conditions to the thriving conditions that we each experience. Now, what can you do if this resonated with you, if you found this helpful? A few things. The first thing I would invite you to do is to schedule a free session with myself or one of their mentors in our community where we can get to know you and talk about what's not working. We would love to know a little bit more about where your pain points are, where you're struggling, where you feel like you're suffering, and we will give you in that session very real, practical, and actionable feedback to uh, enable you to move into this transition, this shift, right away, right there on that first call. And you can find a link below to set that up today. The second thing you might explore doing is joining the Mentoring Men community. Now this is a private men's only community where we help men in a community context. It's very low risk financially. It's very approachable. The community involvement comes with 24-7 support from men all over the world experiencing life as you're experiencing it along with 20 or so live zoom sessions a month where you can deeply connect with other men around these topics ask questions get help get feedback and get better third maybe you have a question from this video maybe you have a curiosity <laughs> i would welcome you to send me an email at sven at mentory men or you can look below and just add a comment ask a question and I'll do my best to respond to you personally and with an intelligent and thoughtful response. If you got something out of this video today, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button, the thumbs up, if you leave a comment, if you'd subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff. It helps us get positive masculinity messages in front of men, messages that are not toxic to humanity and to women. And we would love the world to see more of that. And with that, I wish you a good day. Take care.